Hey everybody, Dan here with The Wealth Instinct. I wanted to share with you my review of the book, Good to Great, Why Some Companies Make the Leap and Others Don't, um, by Jim Collins. It's really by a team of researchers. Um, but first, if you could do me a favor and uh, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you get notifications when I create new content. I share a lot of videos um, and, and posts about business, about um, leadership, about mindset and personal development. So uh, this book, along with um, Built to Last, sort of changed my criteria for how I select books. Um, I went through this leadership program and was reading, you know, as many books as I could find on business and leadership. And, and Built to Last and Good to Great kind of raised the bar, I think, a little bit for me because they were so research driven. And um, there's another really good book that I'll review um, um, called The Influencer Book. But, um, but you know, I, I think we, we tend to put too much of an emphasis sometimes on data in terms of, in terms of telling the narrative. You know, we, we need the data in order to, to see the patterns and see the trend line, but then we need the story in order to learn the lesson. Right, and that's what this book tries to do. It it uses the data to to look at okay, why why do some companies or organizations go from good to great, and why do others why others don't? You know, look at the data and then tell the story to sort of see the patterns. And um and you know they come up with 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 a lot of interesting concepts and a lot of um patterns that they noticed which i think are worth looking into i'm not going to you know try to go through all of it right now but i would definitely say that this is a book that i recommend checking out if you're interested in if you are interested in business if you're interested in leadership um like i would say those are the primary reasons to read this book if you own a business or you want to own a business or or you know you work in management um and, and you want to improve the company you're with and you know, one of the first things they talk about is that how good is the enemy of great, you know, and, and sometimes when, you know, when things are good, we don't try to make them great. And, and, and it's, and it's, you know, it's almost like it's good enough. So, so why make it better? And, and this, it's, it's kind of this paradox, I think, of, of human effort, right? Like we don't go all in. It, it's sort of, we, we try to be um, efficient, right? We don't, we don't want to we don't want to go all in unless we really need to and um but we don't really get the results that we want unless we go all in and um and what what i think is really important about their approach is that they they always looked at comparison companies right because if you're just looking at one company in an isolation you can tell the story and tell what happened but it's hard to see what specifically they did that made the difference when you have a comparison company and you can look at the things they did that were similar and the things they did were different um, it's easier to see what set one company apart from the other and i think one of to me one of the biggest concepts here that they that they share is this idea of level five leadership and um and they talk about you know like the four levels of leadership but the basically like to me the level five leader is someone that's got all the qualities of a good leader but they have this sort of paradoxical combination of humility and drive where it's they they are quiet quietly ambitious and they they give credit to their team for their team's success, but they take responsibility for the team's failure. And you'll find with with fixed mindset leaders, they are the opposite and they take all the credit for the team's success and then blame others for the team's failure. And you'll see this in business, you'll see this in politics. Um, and you know, one of the characteristics of level five leaders is that they want the organization to be successful after they're gone so they want to set the company up for success so they do it tend to do a better job of of 
helping others grow and, and preparing leaders to take over for them. And they're just more humble about about their own um, weaknesses. And that's why they're helping others grow. And that's why they're building up their team all the time. Whereas sometimes fixed leaders can be successful in the short term, but it's almost like some of them want the organization to fail without them, right? They, they want to believe that they are the sole reason that their organization is successful. And so they almost don't prepare anyone to take over so that when they're gone, the organization will fail and then they can prove to everyone that it was only successful because of them. But the truly great leaders don't want the credit. They just want the organization to be successful. And, you know, and they really want to hand the reins off to someone that's going to carry on and, and, and bring the company to even greater heights. And um, to me, this is such a, such a critical idea and such a critical concept. And you see it played out in politics and business and in, um, in, in a lot of different leadership roles in life. Um, and it, it, it's such a critical distinction. Um, one of the other things that they talk about is first who, then what. They talk about getting the right people in the right positions in the organization before you figure out exactly you know what you're going to do you got to get the right people in place and this sort of to me goes back to this that concept of of people first right like we we tend to look at um i i think sometimes we we look at you know economics and we look at humanity and we say oh well you know Economically, we can't afford to do these things, um, but then when the stakes are high enough, we find a way to do it. And if I think if you kind of get down to this people first mentality, and I think that's kind of to me where they're going, right? Like it's you get the right leader, you get the right team, and then then you work on the challenge. Like they talk about um, the big, hairy, audacious goals, and when you have the right leader and the right team, you can attack a big goal and and get excited and work on it. And it's it almost takes something audacious to 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 get you to put out your highest level of effort, right? Like if you have an easy problem or an easy challenge, you're not gonna you're not gonna go all in and go all out. You need you need a big challenge, right? You need something that's gonna be like a, a problem that's, you know, it's, it's almost like in the, in the movies, um, every hero needs a villain that makes them grow. Like you need, you need, um, a bigger challenge in order to bring out your inner hero and, and help you reach that level that you're trying to get to. So, um, um, so much great stuff in this book. I'm not going to get into all of it, but I definitely recommend it. And, um, and you know, like I said, it, it changed my criteria for how I evaluate the books I'm going to read um, because I, I definitely, um, you know, with, with this one and with Built to Last, I love the data-driven approach, but then I also love the storytelling of it and how, you know, because that's how we learn. We learn through stories, through specific examples and they go through a lot of good examples and i think sometimes you know especially as these books age sometimes the, the companies they use they hold up as examples um sometimes fall from grace and so i think that's you know an important reminder so sometimes if you read them um you know years later some of the companies that they talk about being so great you know at the time were but um you know they're different for different reasons and different things they they fell from grace and so it's important to focus on the concepts and and not get too caught up in the in some of the examples but i think the examples are important to illustrate illustrate the the patterns and the concepts so love to hear your thoughts and your comments on good to great and on what books you recommend um there's so many out there it's you know you, it's frustrating that you can't read them all so i like to recommend books to people and, and get their recommendations so i can find out um, which ones I should be focusing on. So thank you so much for watching. Love to hear your thoughts and comments. Have a great day.